Good afternoon. And welcome to St. Agnes Parish. Today, we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. We have the following announcements. Please pray for the repose of the soul of Robert Stock, who died this week. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. We hope that you will plan to attend our Holy Week and Easter liturgies at St. Agnes. The full schedule can be found in the bulletin. Ministers are still needed and are asked to sign up online in the priest's sacristy or by calling the parish office. Plan to participate in our Lenten penance services this week. St. Agnes will host on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. A small number of fish dinners from yesterday's fish fry are available for sale after mass for $5 each until sold out, cash only. Please silence electronic devices and prepare your hearts for worship as we stand and recite the prayer for Eucharistic revival. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the living bread who satisfies the hunger of the human heart. In the Eucharist, the bread and wine become your body and blood, the gift of yourself to the church. Deepen our faith in your Eucharistic presence and strengthen us as members of the church, the body of Christ, as we come to revere your Eucharistic presence. Open us to the needs of our brothers and sisters here and everywhere throughout the world. Help us to reveal your love, your promise, your presence to them, by our lives, and all that we say and do. Amen. Our gathering song can be found in our gather hymnal, number 881, Lift High the Cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, good evening. Amen. And welcome tonight as we celebrate this fifth Sunday of Lent, the beginning of Passion Tide, this special little season of late Lent. Preparing for the passion of our Lord, we see our, our images, our statues are veiled. The fasting of the eyes to heighten our senses to the realities we are about to celebrate. As we enter into this great liturgy, we hear Jesus instruct us the parable of the grain of wheat. 
We remember that all of our days, the mystery of our life is a Paschal mystery, suffering, death, and resurrection. In that confident hope, we begin this liturgy first by pausing to call to mind our sins so we might die to them and rise to newness of life and worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son had in himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand, to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks. of my 
my sin cleanse me A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he had suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, We would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat 
falls to the ground and dies. It remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Good afternoon. It's nice to see you all this evening, uh, friends. As uh, all of Lent, we've been listening to the stories of God's covenant. In, in my preaching, I've been talking about how kind of we progress along the story of our windows. And tonight in the gospel, this curious, two curious things happen. First of all, these two Greeks, right, for John... That's significant. They're, they're not people of the covenant. They've been excluded from the whole story. And now they come and they say, we want to see Jesus. Jesus takes this sign and he, he embraces what's about to happen. He says, the hour has come to be glorified. And then we have this booming voice from heaven, the voice of the Father. It, call, it calls to mind right back when he was baptized, when his mission began. It calls to mind the transfiguration we heard at the beginning of our Lenten journey. And now as we come, brothers and sisters, into Passion Tide, what John calls the Book of Glory. The hour has come. God's covenants from of old are about to be fulfilled. We've been listening all of Lent to kind of that road map. And today we hear the, the prophet Jeremiah say that the days are coming when God is going to make a new covenant with Israel because they broke the old one. But this time, God's law will be written on their hearts. And of course, is is code for the Holy Spirit, for baptism. And we'll see that written on their hearts at, at Pentecost. Now the hour has come. The Son of Man will be glorified. The hour of glory for Jesus is not His preaching. It's not His miracles. It's His death and His resurrection. Christ came for that hour for us to bring us life. He, 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 that hour is realized on the cross when he'll say, Father, forgive them. And he'll accomplish his saving task. Today, Jesus also speaks about what that means. He gives us the image. It's about to be planting season soon. All the gardeners are getting excited. The garden club was here this week. 
He says, it's like a grain of wheat that has to die to give life. The invitation is for us who participate in this life of Christ to respond to grace, to participate in His Paschal mystery by uniting our Paschal mystery, our sufferings, our death to self, our acts of service and love, our hopes, our fears, to His death and resurrection. The grain of wheat, brothers and sisters, is the template, it's the pattern of our lives. To give our lives away as a gift that's deeply embedded in each of our hearts and, and lent our, our disciplines we've been doing, and they help us to do that better. We know also what helps us is the lives of the saints. And so um, with that in mind, I'm going to take a little departure from but the, the liturgists don't tell them. They might get a little upset. I want to consider these, this mystery through the life of a popular saint that we're going to celebrate this week. The saints teach us so much, and I certainly could talk a lot about St. Joseph. Our, our bishop will be dedicating our diocese to him later this week. But I think it's a good moment. Many of you are wearing green. Tomorrow we celebrate in our country and in our church St. Patrick's Day, a, a, a day that's grown in, in significance, a day that's widely celebrated in popularity, even if it's sometimes kind of unmoored from its its foundations. And so I want to propose to you a chance to rediscover St. Patrick today because it's about a lot more than wearing green and shamrocks and lucky charms and, and green beer. Do you remember anything about St. Patrick? Right? Perhaps you remember he used a shamrock. He used what was around him to teach the faith. But, but the story of St. Patrick is, a, is an incredible story of mercy, of adventure, of forgiveness, of witness, of hope and perseverance. Patrick, actually his given name was Maywen Socket, uh, wasn't actually Irish. He was British. The Italians also tried to claim him because he was a Roman They'd settled at the far end of the empire, and as a, he was raised in the faith, but, you know, he just kind of did what he did. His faith became important for him later. You see, when he was a teenager, St. Patrick was kidnapped by pirates. He was sold into slavery. You can imagine his grief. You can imagine his parents how important it is, right, to, to work to end all kinds of slavery, to sin, human trafficking in our world today. He was kidnapped and taken across the, the sea to Ireland where he didn't speak the language, he didn't know anyone. And although he wasn't especially religious before, his captivity drew him closer to God. He remembered what he learned as a child from his parents. How often parents and grandparents, the lessons that we teach our children, that we try to instill on, we think, man, am I having any success? We're planting seeds, and it may come back later to bear fruit. He later wrote that it was his faith that got him through that very, very dark time in his life. He invites us in dark times in our lives to, to turn to God. Patrick was, a, or Maywin was a slave and, and a shepherd until his early 20s when he had a dream. God spoke to him that he, a freedom was awaiting him. And so he, he went, he escaped from slavery, although he got recaptured and then escaped again and he almost starved to death. And he ended up going home to be reunited with his family. And he began formal studies, uh, spent 12 years in a monastery in, in France, and eventually was ordained a priest and later a bishop, now using his Christian name, Patricius. It was another dream that God used to speak to him, however. It was really incredible, and is why we know who he is today. 
God told him he had a dream of the Irish, those people who had enslaved him, the pagans. God was inviting him to become like a grain of wheat, to die to himself, to make a gift, to share the good news of Jesus Christ so that they wouldn't worship pagan gods or nature or worse things. Patrick was unsure of himself. He avoided God. How often we try to run from God, don't we? But God prevailed. Eventually he went and his hesitations vanished. He he journeyed journeyed far and wide, going back to the people who had enslaved him, using his knowledge now of the language, the gifts that God had given him as a priest and bishop, facing he was threatened and jailed and martyrdom was a reality. It's kind of hard for us to imagine what that would look like. But Patrick wasn't afraid. How often God calls us to do things and we're consumed with fear. Patrick turned to his faith. He found strength from God to go back to those people to use his gifts to witness forgiveness. Can you imagine the the witness of forgiveness and mercy? To use those things as leaven in sharing the gospel and he, he, there he established monasteries and churches and, and schools, and there are lots of legends about St. Patrick driving out the snakes from Ireland. We don't know if he, that's historical. We know that snakes are always a symbol of evil, of temptation and sin. And so it is a symbol of conversion, of turning our hearts to God. He did healings. There are stories he even raised people from the dead. Christ did through him. He brought the light of hope and mercy to people who might have been in darkness. We know that the shamrock is often associated with St. Patrick because it was a way for him of taking what was around him and pointing to the true and triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. By the way, a very contentious topic in the fourth century. We hear in the creed all those God from God, light from light, that was all the world in which he existed theological arguments and discussions. And he spent 30 to 40 years present, ministering, loving those people, slowly bringing them to baptism, to Christ, to lay the foundations for a a deeply Christian society. He died in March 17, 461. Of course, that laying a foundation, we try to do that in our own lives, in our families, is, is hard work, and we don't do it alone. There were dozens of great Irish and Celtic saints, evangelizing missionary monks that went all over Europe. If your ancestors were Christian in parts of Northern Europe, there's a good chance some of these monks evangelized them. They had extreme fasting, asceticism, and penance that would put us to shame. They had a heart for the Lord and desire to show forth God's mercy. Many of the monks, if you've ever seen Star Wars, in the one scene where uh, they discover uh, Luke Skywalker, that's in one of the ancient monasteries, those little rock houses, that's where they lived. Did you ever hear of Loch Derg or St. Patrick's Purgatory? Go, go visit Mr. Google. Tough stuff. That austerity remained a hallmark of Irish Catholicism is something that we tap into during this Lenten season, doing penance for our sins that leads us closer to God. Those things aim to empty us of worldly things, to fill us with heavenly things, to die to ourselves, to rise with Christ. One of the greatest gifts those Celtic monks that followed Patrick gave us is the gift of individual confession. Before that, it was a big group thing. There was the order of penitence, and penances were really severe. And so the fact that you don't have to announce all your sins to everybody, you can thank the Irish monks. Thanks be to God, huh? I could go on and on. It's good to learn about St. Patrick, not just as a nice story from a guy from a long time ago or an excuse for a party, but as someone who teaches us over and over again in the pattern of our lives to follow Christ, 
to embrace Him in the hard, difficult moments, to show mercy, to use what's around us to point to Jesus, to accompany our brothers and sisters, and to love them, to become a grain of wheat. Patrick was able to take the hurts in his life, the brokenness of the world, and to place his trust in the Lord Jesus. And Jesus was able to transform them, to transform the culture and the world through all those missionaries. He cooperated with God's grace in, in difficult and even unlikely circumstances and embraced very deeply every day the things we do during Lent prayer, fasting, and almsgiving that form for us the pattern of our lives. Brothers and sisters, may we be united to Christ through that mystery every day of our lives. May we embrace especially the moments of glory at the cross and give witness to the saving love of God with every fiber of our being too. I'd like to conclude with a, a famous prayer of St. Patrick. It's actually a very long prayer, but we're just going to do a short little excerpt. So if you turn to page 334 in your Breaking Bread hymnal, it's called The Breastplate of St. Patrick. Let's ask the prayers of our holy patron to be with us today. Page 334. Christ be with me. Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ where I lie, Christ where I sit, Christ where I arise, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in the ear that hears me, Salvation is of the Lord. Salvation is of the Christ. May your salvation, O Lord, be ever with us. Amen. Together, let us profess the faith of the Church. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. Who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Together in confident faith, let us entrust before the Lord the prayers of the church, our prayers for our world. For the church, especially in our Diocese of Greensburg, which this week will be consecrated to the protection of St. Joseph, may the Holy Spirit bless and deepen our journey of discipleship with abundant spiritual fruits. We pray to the Lord. Gracious God, gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all 
all who govern nations. May the Lord guide their decisions on the path that leads to peace, justice, and the flourishing of their people. We pray to the Lord. Gracious God, gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who suffer sickness, violence, injustice, and anxiety, May they know and see in their grains of wheat the glorification of God's redemptive power. We pray to the Lord. Gracious God, gracious God, in your mercy, all gathered here, our parish and our families. May the grace of the Eucharist strengthen our resolve to be the body of Christ in the world and draw all people to Christ. We pray to the Lord. Gracious God, gracious God, All those who have died, and especially for Joan Schick, may they be saved from death and their graves be opened to the resurrection in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Gracious God, gracious God, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, hear these petitions and those of the quiet of each of our hearts that we place now before you in confidence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song during the presentation of gifts can be found in Breaking Bread, number 715, Take Up Your Cross. Thank you. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed, and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Philip and St. Andrew, with St. John the Baptist, St. Agnes of Rome, St. Patrick, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Thank you. Oh, no. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to this supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Our communion song can be found in Breaking Bread, number 136, Have Mercy on Us, Lord.
Let us continue in breaking bread with number 379, Irish Blessing. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 
With the Easter this month, we will anticipate by one week our birthday blessings and eat March babies. We've got a few March birthdays over there. Happy birthday to everybody. Let's ask God's blessings. Let's congratulate them. And ask God's blessings to be with them. God of all creation, we offer you grateful praise for the gift of life. Hear the prayers of your servants who recall the day of their natural birth and rejoice in your gifts of life, love, and family. Bless them with your supernatural presence and surround them with your love. May they enjoy many happy years, all of them pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And happy St. Patrick's Day. From our gather, let us go forth singing number 492, Jerusalem, My Destiny. Yeah. 